Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk a lot about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And in today's part 65, we continue the discussion from the last video where we talked about diagonalization. More precisely, today we will say what we need such that a given matrix is diagonalizable. Indeed, this is exactly what we need such that we can transform the matrix into a diagonal matrix. However, before we go into the definition, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, on Patreon, here on YouTube or by other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you can download quizzes and PDF versions of all the videos of this channel. And moreover, you can also get early access to all new videos of the channel as well. Ok, now in order to understand what a diagonalizable matrix is, we should recall what we have discussed in the last video. There, we first considered a square matrix A that sends Cn to Cn. This means any vector u is sent to the image Au. And now you know, usually we just do that by considering the canonical basis of Cn. This means you describe u with the coordinates u1, u2 and so on. And then you just apply the matrix vector multiplication to get the image in Cn as well. However, now we have learned that we can also use an alternative grid, an alternative coordinate system to describe this operation. And indeed, for this one we need eigenvectors of A. And then we can simply rewrite U as a linear combination of the eigenvectors. So here for example, let's say we have two eigenvectors x1 and x2. So you could say we can transform U into another basis. And let's say we call this the eigenvector basis and then we just have the coordinates of our linear combination. And then you might already know with the matrix X from the last video we can go back to our original U. This is simply because inside the columns of X we find our eigenvectors of A. Therefore the other direction will be our X inverse. Ok, but here please don't forget we already know what the matrix A does in the direction of the eigenvectors. Namely it only scales in this direction Hence the whole action is given as a diagonal matrix. So let's call this matrix D and from the last video we already know that on the diagonal we find the eigenvalues of A. Moreover you know we should count them with multiplicities and call them lambda1, lambda2 and so on. Ok and now of course the translation here on the right hand side works exactly the same as before. So for example if we want to go back to the canonical basis here we have to multiply with the matrix X. In other words here we see what we have learned in the last video namely the diagonal matrix D is given as a matrix product. So first you have the matrix X then you multiply A from the left hand side and then you multiply X inverse from the left hand side as well. In fact I can't stress it enough this is a formula you definitely should remember for this course. Ok, but now you see the question that arises for this picture here is is that even possible? Or more precisely, for a given square matrix A can we always find such a matrix X and a matrix D such that this formula holds. And moreover we should see that the whole thing comes down to the n eigenvectors we choose. Of course there we have some freedom, therefore the question is can we choose them in such a way that we get the picture above. Therefore we could reformulate the question as can we express each vector u in Cn as a linear combination consisting of eigenvectors. Of course if we can we can rewrite u with the coordinates here and the whole picture works. Hence what we actually want here is that the eigenvectors of A span the whole Cn. So we can reformulate this question in a shorter way. So we see this is now very simple. Is the set given as the span of the vectors x1 to xn equal to Cn? And again if we have that the picture from above works. Ok, but now we also see if the span here is equal to Cn these vectors form a basis. 
Therefore, an equivalent question would be, do these eigenvectors of A form a basis of Cn? This totally makes sense, because otherwise we don't get an alternative grid as a coordinate system. Okay, now as a reminder again, basis means the vectors here are linearly independent and they span the whole space. However, now this means if you put these vectors into a matrix, and you know we usually call this matrix just X, then this matrix has to be invertible if and only if these vectors form a basis. In other words, we can also state the question here as is X invertible? And of course, also here we see we need this for the diagonalization. In other words, now we know the conditions we have to give to the matrix A such that we can do such a diagonalization. Therefore, now we are finally ready for the important definition of this video. And from the title, you already know this is the term diagonalizable. And please note, this term only makes sense for a square matrix. Now, by the equivalence of the questions above, we could choose any statement there, but usually we choose the one with the basis. This means one has to find n eigenvectors of A, such that they form a basis of the whole space Cn. Okay, there we have it. This is the definition of a diagonalizable matrix. And of course, after a definition, we should immediately check for some examples. Indeed, we already know that not every matrix is diagonalizable. However, let's first start with a positive example. And in fact, the easiest one would be a diagonal matrix. There, we know that the canonical unit vectors are eigenvectors. So for example, for the 2 times 2 matrix here, E1 and E2 are eigenvectors. And of course, this is the standard basis of C2 and therefore A is diagonalizable. Of course, each diagonal matrix should be a diagonal matrix as well. However, of course, the important question is, what happens if we go to a matrix which is not of diagonal form already? So let's call it the matrix B and let's write it as a 2 times 2 matrix again. And now I want 1, 1, 0, 2. As before, we immediately see that the vector 1, 0 is an eigenvector again. But obviously, E2 is now not an eigenvector. However, after a quick calculation, we see that for example 1, 1 is an eigenvector. And these two eigenvectors here are enough and we immediately see they form a basis of C2 as well. Hence, this triangular matrix B here is also diagonalizable. And a good exercise here is to write down the matrix X and the matrix D for this case. It's not so complicated and then you can check that you can actually transform B into diagonal form. Okay, now this triangular matrix was diagonalizable, but not everyone is. For this, let's consider a very simple one where we only find ones. So a 2 times 2 matrix in triangular form, so here we find a 0 again. Now as before, we immediately see that 1, 0 is an eigenvector again. However, this is the only direction we find. If you calculate the eigenspace, you see it's only the span of this vector. And please note, for this matrix C, we only find one eigenvalue at all. Therefore, we only have one eigenspace and sadly here it's only a one-dimensional one. Hence, we can immediately conclude that C is not diagonalizable. So in this case, we don't have enough directions for the eigenvectors. The eigenvectors cannot span the whole C2. So we see, even for simple matrices, the property diagonalizability can fail. However, some subsets of matrices always fulfill this property. And this is the last thing I want to tell you here. This is definitely something you should remember. If you have a square matrix A, there are some things you can check before calculating all the eigenvectors. First, I tell you the general one, namely, you can check the multiplicities of the eigenvalues. We have the algebraic multiplicity and the geometric multiplicity. And you already know, the geometric multiplicity gamma is the important one here because it tells us how many dimensions we can span. 
Indeed, it means if we add up all the geometric multiplicities and we get out n, then we find a basis consisting of eigenvectors. However, this property is equivalent to saying that the geometric multiplicity is equal to the algebraic multiplicity. Simply because the algebraic multiplicities always add up to n. Therefore, if we have this equality for all eigenvalues lambda, we find a diagonalizable matrix A. Moreover, it also works the other way around. A diagonalizable matrix needs enough eigenvectors. And this means the geometric multiplicities have to be equal to the algebraic multiplicities. Indeed, this comes immediately out from our definition of A being diagonalizable and from the definition of the multiplicities. Okay, now the second thing here I want to tell you is a little bit more complicated and harder to prove. However, it's a very important implication you never should forget. It tells us that every normal matrix, for example a self-adjoint matrix, is diagonalizable. Indeed, in this case one knows even more, namely one can choose an O and B from the eigenvectors. This is a very special basis, it's a so-called orthonormal basis. It means that with respect to the standard inner product, the basis vectors are orthogonal to each other and normalized. So this is a great thing, which is in general not possible, but for normal matrices it's always possible. So you could say normal matrices are very powerful in this sense. However, the proof of this fact I will shift to another video. Here let's finish this part by telling you another nice criterion for diagonalizable matrices. This one you can apply every time you find n different eigenvalues. This means that each eigenvalue has algebraic multiplicity of 1. And since the geometric multiplicity is always at least 1 for an eigenvalue, we immediately see we need to have this equality for each eigenvalue. So you see, this is already enough. If we have n different eigenvalues, A is diagonalizable. Indeed, this is a very nice criterion, because it means you don't have to calculate any eigenvector at all. You just need to know all the eigenvalues for A. Okay, and this is the last statement in the series. With that, this linear algebra series ends. However, you see, we still have a lot of linear algebra topics we can cover, and therefore we will continue with them in another series. Indeed, I want to expand everything to the abstract level. I want to talk about general vector spaces. However, this will be a new course, Abstract Linear Algebra, you also find here on the channel. Of course, I still hope you learned a lot of concrete linear algebra with this series here. And if you still have some questions about linear algebra here, please don't forget, we have a community forum where you can ask any question. And of course, I also hope that we meet again in the next course where we talk about general vector spaces and general linear maps. So as always, have a nice day and bye bye.